Software usually builds on other software. When you create a ROS package, you determine the dependencies of your package or the packages that must be installed on your system for your package to work. In this video, I will show different methods that you can use for managing package dependencies in ROS2. Hello, I'm Roberto from The Construct. I will be using the online platform from The Construct. Um, you can use it too for free. It's um, just go to theconstructsim.com and create an account. I will log in here and show you the uh, Rust check or project that I have prepared um, to show you practical examples. Um, how to how to manage dependencies for ROS packages. So I will need a ROS, um, I mean a web shell. Let me open it here so that I can better show you the examples. Okay, first thing um, is you can use ROSDEP. ROSDEP is a tool, ROS tool, uh, specially built for managing dependencies of ROS packages. So let me go to my ROS2 workspace and create a new package. Um, I already created here the, the command, so I can just paste it. And we're creating a package which name is my underscore new underscore ROS2 underscore numpy underscore package. And it has dependencies RCLPY, uh, standard messages, geometry messages, and Python tree dash num numpy. So it's created now. Let me just show you here. It's there. Um, so I will cd into it. And as you probably know, if you worked with ROS, there's always a package.xml file that. Um, I will show you the content now. You're probably familiar with it. And here I have the dependent element. Uh, and uh, here is the list of the dependencies that I defined when I created the package. So um, what I will do now is um, use Rastep, the Rastep tool to install the packages on my system that I defined when I created um, when it created it. So let me just put it here. Okay, so all all package um, dependencies were successfully installed, meaning um, there it was not mm, not any dependency was missing. So let me just see if I create this other package um, which has different dependencies um, a python tree dash web sockets if um, let's just repeat the command raw step install um, and see how it goes goes so now it's it's reading the package XML from both packages and it installed Python tree dash WebSocket, which was not before on my system. So um, in the Rosject, you will have this this document, and here I put a link to the web pages that tell you where you can see which of which Python models can be installed using this this method, the raw step tool. Different way of installing uh, packages is um, using the using a package manager. In in Linux is usually apt or apt and apt dash get. And if we just run for instance apt uh, list dash dash installed we will see the packages that are 
install it on our system, which are many. And we can pipe it to grep and just for filtering, uh, if you were interested in searching something like I want to work with uh, Jamal, for instance, yes, this will this will show me what packages are installed. So if you already know the name of the package that you want to install, for instance, I know I want to work with pandas, Python 3-pandas, you can run the command which is sudo apt-get install and the name of the package or packages if you if there are many let me run it and it will ask me if I want to proceed and yes it's installing now So let me let me just uh, use apt list grep and uh, we will see if we if we can find it now and I s let's filter by pandas and there it is pandas python 3 dash pandas is installed Great. Um, a third way to install packages is creating a virtual environment. So, using the tools that that I showed you before, we are installing system wide, meaning that um, from everywhere you will be able to access those um, packages. But sometimes you want to install packages on different versions and uh, you want to keep them separated or isolated from the rest of your system and then you can use a virtual environment so let me just with uh, this command virtual env dash dash version um, see if I I have it installed so now we can use a, a apt just as before to um, well, it's recommended to, to use a apt um, update so that you have the latest list of the packages that you can install and now we will install uh, virtual env to to create um, to be able to create virtual environments all right so one thing uh, which is recommended is to create a new workspace so that you can distinguish between the packages that require the virtual environment and the other package that do not. So let's create here the new workspace. I will call it uh, ras2 underscore v workspace vs underscore vnv and um, Right, let's see the into it, into it. Okay, once we are inside of new or new ROS um, workspace, we can create a new virtual environment using the virtual env program. And um, you have the commands here. And let me show you what uh, it created a subdirectory called vnv which contains the files um, that define the, the virtual environment so we are not inside of the virtual environment yet um, to to or one could say when we have not activated it so run this command the source command and um, source dot dash vnv dash bin dash activate and now you can see that our prompt here has changed and this is telling us that we are inside of the virtual environment now so um, 
when working with Rust and when we build our workspace, we don't want to build the VNV folder that I show you. So we create a file inside of it named uh, colcon underscore ignore all upper uppercase and and place it inside this folder. I will just show you. Sorry. So now you can see this file is here. And this will prevent that the build um, pr um, it will just ignore the contents of the of the VNV folder when it uh, processes uh, the build. So now that this the um, virtual environment is active and that we place this file here to, to ignore um, the VNV folder, we can install install packages that we want to use only when the virtual environment is, is, is activated. We use um, PIP is the program that we run to install packages when we are on a virtual environment. Um, so this is the command python 3 m pip install and then the name or the names of the packages that you want to install. So this will take a while. Great, it has installed. So, for instance, let's um, build the workspace to be sure. Well, there are no packages in there, so but there are no errors, so that's good. And let's just um, check if we um, the package that we installed um, can can be used. So. I'm now inside the Python um, interpreter, and let me um, sorry import torch. So it works. No error here. See um, what version. And it's telling me here the version. So I'm able to use it. So if you want to exit the virtual environment, I just type the activate. So, sorry. And um, let me just try this again. I am uh, inside the Python interpreter and I will port torch. And it tell me modules not found. Why? Because I'm I'm not inside the. I have not activated the virtual environment. So each time you. Um, when you want to run a ROS node that uh, makes use of these. Um, uh, of these packages that are in your. Virtual environment, you have to activate it first. Also, each time you, you open a new shell, you have to run source um, to activate the virtual environment. And this prompt will tell you that you're in inside of the virtual environment. All right, I hope you liked this video. Let me put this away. Um, let me just show you some of the courses that our academy has. If you're interested in learning ROS, you could start with our ROS2 basics course. If you're interested in robot um, navigation, autonomous mobile robots, you do a, a course for robot navigation. Or if you're interested in, in robot arms, you can do a course about robot manipulation. So check our course catalog 
as I said the address is theconstructsim.com and I hope you liked the video if you did please give it a thumbs up or share it with friends um, see you in the next video bye